Hi, this is Ron Tanner. I mean, this is my presentation that I gave at Roots Tech 2018. A future, the future of family search, a look forward. As always, you are welcome to send me an email with your questions or advice or um, features that you might think would be good to ron at familysearch.org. I get lots of email, but uh, feel, go ahead and feel free to do so. I do my very best to answer everybody who writes me. So let's go ahead and get started. We interviewed people and asked them, what are you leaving on your living person and family tree for future generations? They said, oh, I want to put on my birth certificate and my marriage certificate. And they talk of other genealogically relevant things that are all very good. But then we asked, what do you wish your ancestors left you? Then they said, oh, I wish they taught me about their struggles. I wish they shared some of those. I wish they shared the successes and the sorrows and family experiences that helped them or were things they had to overcome. For me, it would be, why did my grandfather start working for the railroad at age 12, blasting tunnels with dynamite? It was funny, I've told the story before, where he he used to tell me that his job was to clean out the holes in the dynamite drill, and then take the dynamite stick and put on the blasting cap, and he used to put them on with his teeth, and then drop the the dynamite down the holes and then run out, of course, to be able to blow the tunnel. And I asked him, Grandpa, why did you bite it, your teeth, I mean, with your teeth on the blasting cap? That's dangerous. He said, you should have used something else. He says, well, I still have my teeth. So that was Grandpa. And I also want to understand why. I want to understand how my Grandpa and Grandma met. I don't know how they met. And why did they get married without any big wedding or any reception, as far as I know? They just went and got married at the Justice of the Peace. I know other a lot of people did that, but usually they had a little celebration. And well, I would like to know what it was like for them and how they survived the Great Depression. The Great Depression started, and they had only been married for three years. And I want to know what made my grandpa tough and demanding, and yet would do anything he could to help you. After they said these things, those we interviewed realized what they were putting on their living person needed to change. It's about connecting with your family. You want to understand where they lived and the foods they ate. My grandpa was pri pri proud of his ham, hock, and beans. This isn't that. He used to do it in a pot, big pot. And he ate onions just like apples. He'd just grab a hold and take a bite or cut big, thick slices. I always thought that was crazy when I was young. It's all and other ways to get to know them. So what are we leaving behind for future generations? I hope that you consider that they want to know who we are and what we did and the experiences we had, both the good and the bad, because both help them understand that they can make it through. Just a reminder, and within four generations, you're forgotten. Nobody remembers you personally. So it's going to be about the stories and the experiences that you can teach your future generations that you've left behind all about you and how they can succeed as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get going here. Um, 2017 notable features. As I do this presentation, I always like to look back to the year 2007, the prior year, and see what we accomplished. <laughs> To start off, let's just talk about microfilm ordering. The first thing we should talk about is, is we no longer provide this. We are down to the final few years to finish digitizing the records we can share. And we have digitized and continue to digitize records based on the most valuable records first, those that have the most genealogical significance. We'll continue to do so until we're complete. Our intention is that all the microfilms that we can put online will be online. If you want to keep track of the collections and see what's been recently released, there is a place you can go to. We not only have it on a blog, but we you can also look at it right in Family Search. You can go to familysearch.org, go to search, and then choosing records. Then down at the bottom right, you have Browse All Published Collections. Click on that, and then you'll see a list of all of our historical collections, both indexed and image only. 
And all you have to do is click on the last updated column, that last updated blue button, and that will reorder the collections to show you the most recently released ones at the top, the ones with the asterisks, the ones that are recently added. This is always constantly being updated, and you just come back and look and see if the records you're searching for are there. We also are now offering web-based indexing, and lots of people are excited and happy with this. The indexing de desktop program has been a great success over the years, and with your help, it has provided billions of names for our users. With newer operating systems, the upkeep of the download program is becoming problematic. Consequently, FamilySearch has created a web-based indexing tool that requires no downloads, and you can do indexing from any computer that has a browser. You can go to the web indexing tool from the main menu. Under the indexing menu, select web indexing. This opens up a dialog to pick your batch. So go and choose the one you want. And then you are given project instructions. Once you read through those, then you begin to index the data in the images. If you need to, just like you did in the other tool. If you need to stop, just leave the browser. And the next time you come back to web indexing, it will remember, it will return you to where you can open up the batch that you had already started and continue where you left off. Also, they, they tell me that the stats from the previous indexing tool will eventually be included in the stats that you're gathering today on the new web indexing tool. And we've expanded our reach into your line in Family Tree to find more recommended tasks on the logged in homepage. We're now going to your tree and looking back seven generations and down two. Recommended tasks are these things that are show up on the law, what we call the homepage, the logged in homepage. Once you log in, we examine your line and we look at things in your line, seven up and two down, that have hints in this example. And, and other data problems and other issues that we find that may help you in find more about your family or correct information that's on your family. I would like to take a moment right now and make a suggestion on hints and sourcing. When you are working on a hint or adding a record to a person, as you remember, the left side is the record and the right side are the family. Take the time to attach it or create the people that are in all the people represented in the entire record. This not only provides full use of the source, it also helps others who come after you because then that person's already attached and they'll be able to find the person in the tree. So please, let me back up here so you can see it. Please go through and not just attach the principal person, but try to attach all of the people in the record so that they're all accounted for. And then those who are related to those other people will be happy that you've provided records and start their line for them. We also introduced Family Tree Lite. Last year we told you about Family Tree Lite, but it wasn't until 2017 when we released it. The intention of Family Tree Lite is that you can see vital and relationship information about your family. You can add parents, spouses, and children, and it consumes a fraction of the data plan. This is primarily for use in parts of the world where there's little or no, or no internet activity or internet availability. And it, when you do get a data plan on your phone, it's costly. As I remind you, we can do all of this in less than 31K. It now also supports helper so that family, Temple and Family History consultants in those areas can now help users using the Family Tree Light product. And so far, we've translated it into 15 different languages. We support English, French, Italian, German, Portuguese, Spanish, Thai, Khmer, Mongolian, Indonesian, Swahili, Malagasy, Tongan, Samoan, and Vietnamese. Now we've also released and enhanced the person labels and family tree. Person labels, though those who might not be sure where they are, these are where the person, what we call person labels. These little, uh, we introduced these in an effort to help provide some interesting church history that involved your ancestor. Labels are now open edit, an open edit, so you can make any corrections to the data and remove or add labels that are appropriate. We are also working on a process to allow users to request additional labels. 
when you think about it, labels, we have to be careful because these labels are seen by everybody in Family Tree, and we have to make sure the labels we choose are not offensive to one group or another. So that requires our review. We also have new memories upload restrictions. I wanted you to be aware of that. There have been some changes to the upload restrictions and memories that we included this year. Let's review some of the changes. <clears throat> there can be no, this is an addition, there can be no sacred or other religious content, such as clothing, rites, patriarchal blessings, or temple family cards can be uploaded. So be aware of this. Also, there can be no images of people kissing or about to kiss on the mouth. So on the lips or the mouth, regardless of gender, age, or relationship, can be uploaded. So let's take a little test here to see how you do so you can understand what's appropriate and what's no longer appropriate. How about this one? Is this one okay? And the answer is yes, because they're kissing, but they're not kissing on the lips or about to kiss on the lips. How about this one? This one, of course, is a no because they're about to kiss on the mouth. How about this one? This is a mother with a little child. Is this one okay? What do you think? The answer is no because they are about to kiss on the lips. It doesn't matter the relationship between the people. There is no kissing or about to kiss on the lips or on the mouth. Now, how about this one? Obviously, this one's not going to pass because they are kissing on the mouth. So that's a no. And lastly, how about this one? Mother and her child. This one's okay because although she's kissing him, she's not kissing him on the lips. So that's perfectly fine. All right, let's talk a little bit about memories, living tags. To protect the identity of living persons, we have changed the way that living tags work in FamilySearch.org. For example, here's a picture of my mother and father. I put in the tags for both of them on this picture. When I was young, I was surprised to find out that they were dance directors in their day and taught dance classes across LDS stakes. And this was a picture of one of their dance trainings, I guess. My dad is still deceased, but my mom, when I took this, when I did this screenshot, was still living. I, both, I see both tags because I put them in. But because when my wife logs in and look, goes and looks at the same exact picture, she only sees the name of my deceased father. She does not see the name or people entry for my mother because she is still living. She can see the picture but not the tag. My wife can tag my mom and link it to a living person in the tree that she has created. When you deleted a memory that you uploaded, it deleted from the system almost immediately. One user had accidentally deleted over a hundred of her memories and called us frantically. Luckily, there was just a few minute, uh, a little time delay between when it was marked deleted and when it actually got removed from the system. Luckily, we were able to caught the pro and caught the process just in time, and we were able to restore all of her pictures. Since then, we have added the ability to restore recently deleted memories. Now when you delete a memory, it goes into the recently deleted wastebasket in your gallery. The recently deleted wastebasket now has a delay of 120 days before the memory is permanently removed from the system. Well, I should say, if you go to your wastebasket and you find something in there you don't want to delete or you delete it accidentally, you can just click it to restore it back and it will not be deleted. Anything you leave in the wastebasket after 120 days will be permanently removed from the system. We also in memories now are importing photos from Google Photos. This is a good thing because usually Google Photos have a full resolution uh, rather than the other systems that uh, shrink the resolution of the image so that they have they consume less storage space. They're good quality and some need to be preserved. Now when you select to upload photos you can select now Google Photos as well. These are great because they're usually better. So clicking on will have you log in to Google and then once it is brought up the list of photos select the ones you want and click import. 
and they will be pulled into your gallery. Now let's check out some new mobile features we've added. Relatives around me and family tree mobile. Those who came to the Roots Tech presentation, we had relatives at Roots Tech where we showed your relationship to everybody who opted in in Roots Tech. I will point out for those who came, it was great excitement. We had over 8,000 people that uh, participated. We found well over 2.2, I think it was, a million relationships. And uh, people were running around boasting. They saw 300 of their closest cousins, and they could send messages to them right out of the Family Tree app. We actually were only showing you the closest 300. Many of you had more than 2,000 relationships at the event. But you can still do relatives around me in your local area. Download and install the Family Tree mobile app for iOS and Android. Then log in and bring your tree down. You can do uh, once your tree is there in your mobile app. You can get those around you to do the same thing. Click on the More button, then choose Relatives Around Me. This does require that the app have the access to your GPS system, so you need to make sure that you give Family Tree rights to be able to access your GPS location services. Once you've done that and you go in here to Relatives Around Me, you can then opt in and say Scan for Friends. This will show your portrait from the tree, your full name, and your shared deceased ancestors to this other to others that you grant this right to. You click it, uh, it will begin to scan for people around you within 300 feet, and they have to be also in relatives around me scanning at the same time in order for you to find each other. This one I asked my son to do relatives around me so I could take a screenshot. So my son, Jarrett, showed up in the list. And then you, and you'll see everybody in the list that's also participating at the same time in your stake or in your ward building or in your activity, your family reunion or something. And, uh, you click the name and it will show you how you're related to that person. This one, of course, not so interesting because my son is there and there's my wife and my son. And I see my side of the, uh, my living and then the dead. The other person will see not my living. They'll just see living and then the word living and then see all my dead and how we're connected. And it'll also say up here at the top where it says my son, it'll tell you your relationship, third cousins, once removed, things like that. So give it a try. You'll love it. And it's great fun. I also recommend you do it for youth. If you have youth around, the thing I will warn you is once you show this to them, the, the uh, presentation is over because they'll be running around, sitting next to others and seeing how each other are related and having a ball. So uh, make sure you do it at the very end of your presentation because you'll it'll be difficult to get them all back. There's another feature in Family Tree released this last year, 2017, and that's Map My Ancestors. So now you can go in there and go to the More, go, go into the More menu and then click Map My Ancestors and then it will map out your ancestors in your family tree app, those that are downloaded onto your family tree app. You can zoom and move around to see your ancestors. Here I zoomed into England because I knew I had some there. I could continue to zoom in to be able to find out actual locations. This is mapping, I believe, their birth and death dates. Okay, now let's start looking at planned future features. But before we do, I want to just take a moment and let you know some statistics about Family Search, how it's doing this last year. So in 2017, as of uh, this was as of February of 2017, we had 1.18 billion people in Family Tree. This is because of your great efforts and your great additions that we've been able to achieve this. Thank you very much, and can, I hope that this continues to be a place where you feel comfortable sharing your ancestors and working with your relatives. People are adding 3.8 million new persons per month. We have 915 million sources. People create 5 million sources a month. And this is a great number. We just recently had the capacity to calculate this. There are 1.28 billion records attached to people in the tree. That is tremendous. 
There's 1.8 billion people and 1.28 billion sources attached to people. Over 50% of the tree has at least one attached source. So that's terrific. The tree continues to improve and get more accurate. There are 24 million total memories in the system. We now have off we're now offering 6.2 billion searchable names in the historical records that you can come search for, or even better, put your tree into family tree and tie it into everybody else's in the in the same tree, and we'll start searching those 6.2 billion records for you, and then show you hints where you can we'll just search all the six billion to see if we can find matches. Historical record images we are up to 1.25 billion historical images available. And we publish annually approximately 270.5 million records every year. Okay, so that's great stats, but I wanted you to kind of get a feel for where we are in 2017. Now, we are working on ways to accelerate the release of historical record images and indexes, as they are so vitally important to help us discover our ancestors. When images are captured from cameras, Volunteers come and review what records are at risk. These are real live pictures of places that we're doing right now. They review the records. They prioritize the information to capture the most important first, those that have the most genealogical value and are greatest to be lost because of the damage. Then the volunteers take high-resolution pictures of the records, and these are stored on a hard drive that is then sent to Salt Lake City to be processed. I found this particular image that I'm going to show you next that in an actual uh, set of digitized images that were sent to Salt Lake. Here you go. Looks like from time to time we, they must work really hard to get these records imaged because here's a lady that fell asleep while the camera was still capturing. I think that's great. When the images arrive, we preserve them and then they wait to be processed. Sometimes this could be a long process. In some cases, we've had several years later before we can get the images onto the system. Well, our goal this year is to have the images on Family Search as a browsable image collection within 24 hours of when that hard drive arrives in Salt Lake City. And then to help you find these images, instead of having to browse every single image that come in, because we're talking about millions of images. We want to provide you a new way to search through images. And if we cannot find the index version because we haven't done them yet, then we're maybe provide you a image search. For example, let's say if you entered in someone's first and last name and the area, Peru, and the year span, we can't find any index versions or can't find good ones. Then what if we showed you, uh, show you the collections that appear to be about that person or that area in the time span that you gave us. And then now you can just go look at those 18 images of the best match, or the 29 images in the next line, or the 82 images. That's better than having to search through hundreds of images, at least to narrow it down to be able to find your ancestor more quickly. So we're working on this new search capability. We are also want to start working on allowing users to correct the indexes that exist on the records. Here's a mock-up of what we are thinking. You see the source, and you can create, add to, or edit the current indexes on the record. That's what we're looking at doing, that you can correct indexes or you can add indexes that are missing. We are currently working to retool and improve the family tree interface on FamilySearch.org website. The code name, I'm cutting you all in, this internal name is V8. And it's V8 because it's like a really souped up motor compared to the old four, straight four barrel. Gets an improve, all about improving performance, reducing excess data download so we don't use much of the internet and be able to scale from small to very large screens. So you buy these big giant screens and you put a big browser on it and we still show you a third of the screen. We want to change that so that all of that person page, for instance, expands across your whole giant screen so you can see everything at once. And then we also are going to update some features as we go along. For instance, you've seen some of the V8 already. The landscape view has already switched over to V8. You notice that the view is now on a drop down. So you have to click the landscape and have a drop down to pick your other displays. Okay, you click Recents, 
your recents is a new addition and it's also a V8 item. And you now your recents is that's where there used to be the little arrow next to the tree and the person. Now we've combined it into your recents list. You can do all the same things there, such as entering the name or the ID and have it filtered. You also now have a new edit button here that came along a little later. And from that, if you click that, then you can go and delete people out of your recents list. Remember, if you click on the tree icon, you will see the tree of the person as them at the root. Or if you click on their name, you will see their person page. That's how you navigate in the recents list. The other views, such as descendancy, are not in V8 yet, but we'll continue to evolve them and change them as we go. And along with other areas of the Family Tree web client. Shared projects. Let's talk a little bit more about shared projects, about shared living. We want it to be a place where the family can come and work together on family history, both living and the dead. What if we made a destination place where you can have an activity feed of messages from others in the family? Maybe on that feed, you put in a picture you had uploaded, and then you ask the family, the, those in the family, to help identify the people in the tree, in the picture, excuse me. Thus creating a family with a to-do list that others can help with. And maybe even talk about the next family reunion. And of course, you'll see your common shared living. So we're still working on the sharing of the living. Notifying if a change happens to any of your contributions that you put in without having to watch them all. And updated possible duplicates, by the way, since RootsTech, we have actually switched over to the new possible duplicate system that uses the technology from the hinting engine. And uh, it's faster, it's very much faster, and it's more accurate. But still, take a look at those duplicates because they may, may be close, but may not be your exact duplicates. So be sure and check before you merge. And we've also al allowed merging in the private area so that you have duplicates of living uh, or other duplicates. So you can now merge them together. Okay, the Family Tree mobile app is about to release the multiple windows in the app. This is great, especially for iPads, but it'll work anywhere and make things a whole lot more efficient. Let's say you're looking at Ancestors with Tasks, and you click on the Add New Screen Plus sign, and you look up your Ancestor, and then you go to the, the Open the Screen Manager, and now you click, now you split the screens, and now you see both screens at the same time on your iPad or your phone. This can be very useful when you're looking at the person you're uh, doing work on and then be able to look at the hint that's been given, given to see if it's really matching that person. Both screens are independent and you can keep working any parts of them. You can also uh, go in the screen manager and go into switch or delete screens. You can scroll over and get two different screens to look at. All of them are live and active at the same time. And then you can delete the screen if you don't want that to be around anymore. Hey, this presentation went a whole lot faster. It's only half the time because there's nobody uh, having fun and laughing and talking and asking questions, which my presentations usually are tight for one hour. But when there's nobody on the other side and I'm just recording, it's a 30-minute deal. So come join us at Family Tree to accurately document the genealogy of the world and preserve it forever. Family Search is the world's genealogy. Share it. Discuss it, fix it, source it, preserve it, get help from millions to find and preserve billions. Thank you very much. Remind you, and please tell others, to come and join us on Family History Ron on Facebook, where I do a Facebook Live every couple times a month to answer your questions. I also have Instagram and Twitter. Tell your friends, and thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And I hope sometime in the future you might be able to see one of my live presentations. Thank you very much and have, have a good day.